<clears throat> we're finishing this mimer in Lakuti Torah that's talking about the <coughs> this fourth level, Rova Yisrael, fourth level, which uh, is only accessible to the Jewish people when they do the commandments. And this is the blessing that that uh, that Bullock gave to the Jewish people, of course, against his will. And it says, Mi man so who can count the quarter or the fourth level, whatever, or the four levels of, um, of the Jewish people? So the Rebbe explained, if you remember, that this is the essentially the commandments. That God creates the worlds. He creates everything constantly. And he creates everything constantly from his thought, speech, and action. Thought is creates what's called the dimension of the world, which is called Bria. Speech is the dimension of the world of Yetzira. That's a little bit lower. And action is this physical world. And these are all these spiritual worlds. These are all the creations of God. But when the Jewish people do a commandment, then it reaches a higher level than all these three. And that's hinted at by what the prophet says, Barativ Yatsarativ Af Asisi. Also, that's the level of the also that's doing the commandments. And the Rivi explained in, <clears throat> in beautiful detail what exactly this fourth level is. <clears throat> Just one second, one moment. Yeah, so he said this is this fourth level of godliness. Says the Rebbe, but all this is talking about. <coughs> This is talk, so the, the commandments that's pure, pure godliness. So being drawn into the world. That means that's what the Jewish people are, are for. To, in other words, to simply to reveal the creator in his creation. <laughs> Says the Rebbe, but this all oh, this is talking about the in, external aspect of the creator. But there's a higher level of the creator, which is revealed by learning Torah. Learning Torah is even a deeper aspect of Hashem that's revealed in the world when a Jew does a Torah, when a Jew learns the Torah. And then he compares the difference between the, um, the, the, the connection that God has with the world through the Torah and through the commandments that the... the, the, the uh, the, 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 the commandments, this is an expression of what's called God's limbs or God's uh, outer will. But the Torah is the source of the commandments. That's even deeper. And that's why like in the Holy Temple, uh, there were all the commandments, but in the inside of the Holy of Holies, that's where the Torah was. That was where the Torah was. This is, what does the Torah draw down? The Torah uh, evokes what's called God's mercy. And this level of God's mercy, this means a free gift from God. The others we can arouse love of God, etc. <clears throat> so he said that the first is drawn down by this first level of love, which is called great love of God, appreciation of God. This is by the commandments. But level, <clears throat> the second, base mechanism. The first one is, like it says, Am Kashe Orif. Like we said, the Jewish people are a stiff-necked people. This means that we get from the will of God, that which is the commandments. The second is what we said, is a tremendous pleasure in God. This is drawn by means of the inner will of God, which is, that's the Torah. That's what we learned yesterday. And King Solomon calls it the Sha'ashui et b'nei Adam. This is called the deep pleasure of man. adam ta'ir panav. The wisdom of man shines up his face. Okay, so let's just say this in a very simple way. Everybody is in this world and they live and they die. Right? So in the middle, here we're living in the world. What, what are we living in the world for? What are we here for? And first of all, <clears throat> we weren't here. And then all of a sudden we get born. And then after, you know, 100 years or whatever, so we die. So what's the purpose? What's the whole idea? So some people say, there is no idea. You just hear, just don't ask too many questions. And uh, you're, you're alive. 
you're alive, and then that's just then that's it. You can make the most out of life. I think that's the majority of mankind. That's what they really feel. That they're here. Then there's a little bit higher sort of a level, and that is you're going to go to heaven. I'm here because I'm going to go to heaven. So that's so that's a little bit that's that's maybe a little gives a bitter a bigger picture of what's going on because you're taking into 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 account that something you feel down deeply that you just don't go away you know that you, you do somehow or other life is bigger than just what you know the few hundred years or whatever or 70 years 80 years that you're here in the world right so Figure there's something more. So that you go to heaven. That's what all the religions are. That's where all these religions come in. Then there's a higher way of looking at things. A higher way of looking at things. And that is that I know that I'm here for a purpose. I don't know what it is, though. I know that there's a, so there's meaning in every moment. Let's live for true values. Values. Honesty. Love. Loyalty. Set. So that's, that's, let's say, a little bit higher. It's a little bit less selfish than living just to go to the world to come. A little bit. But the problem with that is, of course, is that anybody can come and, and make up new values. Here comes a Stalin and says, you know, the real value of the world is, you know, the, the communism. It comes Hitler and says, no, it's big, uh, big Germany. is the Some people say, no, the value, of, the real value of living for a value of the world is, you know, love and peace and, and brotherhood and like the hippies, you know, like nowadays with the, the, the woke people, you know, to, to have a good environment and to, to improve things and to be natural. And to, that, that's the big goal. That's the big goal. Comes along Judaism and Judaism says all these things are very nice. These are very nice. Good, good you're thinking about life. But the fact of the matter is, is you're totally wrong because there's a creator. And that every moment in this life, you can be serving the creator. And after you die, you don't serve the creator anymore. So, and this was not good. But don't worry, there's a thing called the raising of the dead. And the raising of the dead, then you'll see how every moment was really something infinite. Something infinite. So the, the Rebbe says, there's two ways that this is revealed. First of all, by the commandments, and then by the Torah. The, the commandments, they reveal that every moment is God's will. God's will. You can attach yourself to God's will. And that gives you a feeling of... Um, a meaningful feeling, a truly meaningful feeling. You're actually connected right now, not just in the future, you're going to go to heaven or whatever. Connected right now to God's will. Right? And, but then there's something even higher than that. And this, this is only the Jews have this. Only the Jews have. That's why God gave us the commandments on Mount Sinai. Only Jews have commandments. There's no, there's no other religion that has commandments. So we have commandments. There, but then says the Rebbe, that's it. Attaching to God, what could be greater than that? Said, well, the commandments... The way God made it is that they have a source, and that's the Torah. So when a Jew learns the Torah, this is even higher. This is, so to speak, higher than God's will. This is God's pleasure. And you can partake of this a little bit. You get, you feel the whole essence of the thing is these are means that you do not think about yourself. You're thinking about something that's more real than yourself. You're thinking about your creator. You're thinking about the reason why you're here. Says, the way that you can get the people learn the Torah, everybody, I learn the Torah, you, learn the, you get this pleasure of God and you feel the God. I mean, I, I'll be honest, I don't feel it. You know, I believe that it's so. The Rebbe says that it's so. It definitely is so. And I'm certain that the Torah is more than meets the eye. That I'm certain. And I'm certain the Torah is not what the other religions say. You know, the Torah. That the, you know, the Muslims say the Jews lost the Torah and the Christians say the, the Torah is just, you know, just there to, to, to prove that this guy is the Messiah, which is a, a total lie and a bluff. And the, but nevertheless, that's what they say, you know, and the Torah lends itself to this, you know, it's just a book in the library. So maybe you got lost, maybe you can reinterpret it, maybe this. But what about the light of the Torah, the godliness of the Torah, feeling the godliness of the Torah? There must be more to the Torah and what these other religions say and what there is. So that's what the Rebbe is explaining. The Rebbe is explaining that the Torah is the inner wisdom and will and essence pleasure of God. How does a person merit to this? This is what's called Yehuda Eloah, the upper unity of God. That's how he started this paragraph. 
that the commandments, that's what's called the lower unity. That there, there is a world, but the world is united with God. God creates it. The upper unity is that all there is is God. And the world is just a huge, amazing miracle. Right? But the world doesn't really exist. All there is is God. And you feel it. That's called the upper unity. That is achieved by the Torah. That was what was in the Holy of Holies. That was what happened on Mount Sinai. How do you get it? This is by the means of Yaakov. Yaakov is mercy. <coughs> if you connect with this aspect of mercy, I know. The Orer, Rabbi Mal Nafshaw, the Kaviyos Itim, by requesting God, God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I'm just a creation. I'm just a person, right? I'm just a person. I'm so wandering around in the world. I feel like God. I wake up in the morning. I think, wow, well, I'm here. Here I am. This is the real reality. And, 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 this is, and it's a wrong feeling, right? But you gave me this feeling, and I don't, you know, I want to use it for something bigger, something more real, eternal, but I, I just don't feel it. So have mercy on me, Hashem. <clears throat> for instance, midnight. We, we did this yesterday. I'm just going off what we did yesterday. For instance, in midnight, that's what's called tikkun chatzot. There's certain prayers, that it's not long, it's five minutes long. If you want to take it really seriously, it could be much longer. Also, whenever you are praying to God, it has to be that you are praying not just what should God give you. That's also part of prayer. Everything you have, you're supposed to be. That's what we learn in Kuntra Sumayan, we learn once a week. You can see it in the past uh, <clears throat> classes. But all, all the time when you you're praying, it should be, you're requesting mercy. Mercy. Hashem, have mercy on me. I, all I want to do is just serve you. You know, I just want to do what's right. Pasuki, the Zimra, there are the sentences, which are called sentences of song. These are usually the Psalms of King David. Pasuki, the Zimra. Pasuki, the Rachamim, some of the sentences are in in uh, Get a prayer book and translate all the words. A Jewish prayer book, translate all the words. It's a good, not a bad idea to translate the Psalms also. And say the Psalms are very beautiful. When you're saying in Hebrew and you understand what you're saying, it adds also <coughs> a whole new depth to it. But there are sentences in prayer that are sentences of mercy. The time of prayer, or at midnight, when you say this midnight prayer, this is the time to arouse... This is a proper, a propitious time to arouse the mercy of God on your soul. And when, combined, when this is combined with Torah, then this gives you a little bit of a sort of a feeling of the pleasure of God, the source of the Torah. That's the aspect of Yaakov, Jacob. Jacob is Yud with an Akiv. We're just doing, I just did this yesterday, so we're just going over it. But it still is interesting. You could do this, nothing but this, uh, every, every day. We could learn the same sec, sec, section. Uh, you know, to understand that intellectually is one thing, and then to bring it into your heart. They say that the Hasidim of the Alter Rebbe, the pupils of the Alter Rebbe who was writing all this, they were tremendous geniuses, and they would learn his Maimorim 500 times, 500 times, until it became internalized. Shu and Yen Rachmanis, this is Having Yaakov, Jacob is mercy. We say that Abraham is love, Yitzchak is fear, and Yaakov is mercy. <coughs> this is have mercy on what? On the Yud, on the in your soul. Your soul is also the name of God. Man is made in the form of God. So your soul also <coughs> has these four letters: Yud, and then Hey, and then Vav, and then Hey. Yud is the aspect of of Chachma, faith of God. And that, that's the, that's your essence soul connection with God is symbolized by the letter Yud of your soul. And where is this Yud, the essence connection with God? It's trapped in your body, in your personality, in your this, it's trapped. Shinofla that came down and you're the, the level of Akev, that's Yud, is the first highest aspect of your soul, comes down into the Akev to the heels of your soul just, just enlivening your body and you're living like a dog or like a cat or whatever. And that's what, what is dominant in you. Most people, the, the lower part is dominant. You're what people think about me, what I want, what I desire, what am I, 
my, my, you, get, you get depressed, you get angry, you get this. You get, right? That's what's dominant. You forget about the yud of Akiv. So he says, Yaakov, the way to arouse this essence of your soul that's connected to the essence of God is through requesting mercy. Hine, Midas and Shal Yaakov, the aspect of Yaakov, Jacob, which we said is mercy. Mavriach min It goes from the highest to the lowest. To raise up from the dirt, the impoverished person. In other words, when you're really, really down, and you really think you know you're just a, a you know, you're a failure, you're worse than a failure. And everything you do it would better, I, I wouldn't have even been born. Everything I do is just do wrong, and I'm selfish, and I'm and then it, I got the whole world, the whole entire creation wrong and everything wrong, and I'm just doing bad things. And the person feels that's the lowest of the low. He says, well, God elevates you from there. That can be raised up to what's called the upper unity. Like we said, that's what we're, the whole subject of this is. See, this is, we said, what we talked about before, this is the lower unity. And he says, but there's what's called an upper unity. Talmud Torah, this is the upper unity. That's Yehudi Eloah. See here, the upper unit. So how do we get to this? It says, first of all, by requesting mercy on your soul. And that's what it means. That's what it says. My soul is like dirt to everyone. Then, you, then your soul is open to the Torah. That's what it says in Parshas Vayakel. This is the way of the Torah. It said, Alo Oretz Tishan. Be very humble. Sleep on the ground. I'm not the Rebbe is not advising people to sleep on the ground, but he, what he is saying is, is that humility is very important because after all, we're just creations. Ah, but Rabbi say call Osik Torah. Anybody who learns Torah alone, even Torah he doesn't have. If a person says all I have is the Torah, even that he doesn't have. So what do you have to have together with the Torah? Torah and the commandments, right? He says yes, that's also good. You're getting close. But there has to be Torah with gamilat chasadim. The commandments are true. That is doing kindness with the world, bringing godliness into the world through the commandments. But there's a, 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 a you are so, right? I am so poor. I am so low. How do I arouse God's mercy? I ask for it, right? He says, that's one way. But there's another, a better way is you yourself be merciful. Give charity. And therefore, conceive it says the Mispar's rule of Israel. Therefore, it says who can count the quarter, the number four of the Jewish people. This is Bechinas Asisiv, Af Asisiv. The Maisa Mitz is doing the commandments and the Maisa of Tzedakah and also charity, giving charity to the poor. This is called Mitzvah Stam. Charity is called the commandment. Sheshakula connected columnists is that the commandment of giving charity to people, this is equal to all of the other commandments. This is what's called Gamilat Chasadim, giving kindness. And this is what makes the Torah really meaningful. I much like it says, there's a, a mimer, etc. Uh, it says, look in the Zohar, and etc. <clears throat> Right, okay, and the Zohar explains other ideas, what it means the quarter of Israel. Okay, so what do we learn? We have learned that the Jewish people, that this is what Bilam saw. Bilam saw that it was a very spiritual person. He saw all the upper worlds. There are three basic upper worlds, which is the world of Bria, the upper heaven, upper Gan Eden, and Yetzira, lower Gan Eden, and Asiya, which is this physical world. And he saw that the Jews are, have a fourth level that's higher than all that. And that's who says Rova Yisrael. And that is the commandments. And even higher than that is the Torah. And the Rebbe is saying you can activate the Torah by putting them together, the Torah and the commandments, but also by giving charity. And that's what love and that's what, what the Bilam saw. That he saw that Jews have an access to this fourth level, which is, that's what it means, le level number four, but also it encompasses all the others. Right, so the, the, that's the number four. In other words, it encompasses all of the three. So this fourth level is actually four levels. In other words, it so it's one quarter because it's only one level, but it encompasses all the others. Therefore, it is the morning. Now let's go. This we have 
time, thank God. So let's go and learn another. There's another beautiful mimer. We'll see how far we can go in this mimer. Right? It's near the end of the, this. Let's see. I think it's something like this. Uh-oh. Here it is. Okay, what what is one of the things? There's another another blessing that Bilam got gave. And he said, Lo Amol, Lo Ra Amol be Israel. He said that God does not see any sin in the Jewish people. Amol means sin. The word Amol really means like hard work. Amalim Batora, working hard. But he says the word Lo Ra Amol be Israel. Means that he does not, God does not see. We learned this yesterday. God, God, God does not see any sin in the Jewish people. Right? Here's the sentence. Let's see, where is it? Here. It says, this is sentence number uh, 21, chapter tw- 23, Chav Gimel. Says, Lo he beat Oven Biakov, Lura Amol be Israel. God does not see any sin in the Jewish people, and he does not see any transgression in Israel. That's one way of translating it. Right. So Rashi says it means a sin. So God doesn't see any sin. Now, the word almo also means hard work. <coughs> so let's see. What does it mean? God doesn't see any hard work in the Jewish people. What does it mean? Why is this a blessing? This is a, a, a very great high quality that the Jewish people have in, in the Jewish people. That's the, there's the level of Yisrael and Yaakov. The, it says two sentences. What does it say? Lo he beat oven be Yaakov. Velora amol be Yisrael. God did not see any sin in Jacob and any transgression in Yisrael. So there's the aspect of Yaakov and Yisrael. Yaakov, we said, is God's mercy. There's different ways of interpreting it, but God, that's the lower level. Yaakov was the name that given to Jacob when he was fighting the angel. And Yisrael was the name after he won the battle. So like we said, Yaakov is Yud, Akib. This is the Jewish people trying to bring godliness into these low levels, into the world, into the confusion and 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 the, the the evil of the world, trying to bring godliness down here into this meaningless world. The world is like Akiv. It's like the heels. The heels. I have no consciousness. The heels are the lowest part of a person. It's on the you know unless you're a reflexol, reflexology reflexol, reflex, reflexologist, right? The heels. Everybody's heels are pretty much the same thing. You can't tell the person's personality from his heels. Maybe if you learn it, some of you can. From a person's eyes, you can see a little bit from his, his face, his, his heels, what is it you can tell? The heels and they're inside of the shoe, you can't even see what's going on. So that's the, yud is the highest aspect and the heels are the lowest. So that's the aspect of the Jew that he has to sort of fight with the world and defy the world and transform. Yisrael is the level of Judaism, of a Jew that's called the upper unity, where a Jew just feels God all the time. He just feels the oneness of God all the time. That's supposed to be the ideal level. And everything that he does in the world, it's sure there's challenges, like Moses had challenges and Abraham had challenges, but it, it's it's all like challenges given from God. It's not that he's really, you know, taking the world seriously and the world really disturbs. Here we see like the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, he was in prison and he didn't pay any attention to them when he was in, in prison. They were going to kill him. He didn't pay any attention. It didn't have any effect on him at all. That's like this level of Israel. So, okay, that's this is in every single Jew. In other words, it's essential attachment to God. This is a level of, which is called Yisrael, which is not on the level of Yaakov. Yaakov is a lower aspect of the Jew that he has to fight, and Yisrael is the higher aspect. In this level of Yaakov, if we're talking about Yaakov, it says, Lo hivit ovon. It says, God does not see, does not look at the transgressions, like we said before, that's in the previous Maimur.
If that's what it says, you got to a matzata. In in Yaakov, he has to work hard in order to one second, to succeed. Just one second. I'm going to go back here. What happened? Did I go too far? No. Oh, there here you go. That's okay. Let's see. We go. Let's go again. I skipped out this word oval. <clears throat> So there's Yaakov and Yisrael. Yaakov has to work hard. That's the level of the Jew. Let's say the Benoni has, has to work hard. Says Yaakov. So what does the sentence say? Again, lo he be oven. God does not see any sin in Yaakov. And he doesn't see any uh, uh, amal be Israel. Hard work. Let's translate it that way. Hard work in Israel. So he says this is a high level of Yisrael, which is not in Yaakov. Yaakov has to work hard. Yaakov, it says God doesn't see any sins. Aval, but, aval, but. Yegia, yimotse, yegia. He does see that there is hard work. Yimotse, but this is found in Yaakov. Yaakov has to work hard. He has to deal with the difficulties of the world. This is the level of a servant. The avoda is amal. This is hard work. The yegiya. La kafi le sitrach. You have to fight against the sitrach. This is the idea of the the benoni, that he has to work hard all the time and he has to try to ignore his bad, <coughs> bad thoughts and bad emotions. La kafi le chashucha. He has to try to force himself to do good and force himself to turn from bad. Al yaday tefila by means of prayer, doing commandments, etc. Hainu bechal sheish yamei amaisa. This is like a Jew works in the six days of the week. Like it says, you have to work six days, ten commandments. I know, come all of Mashal, just like a Malachos, Gashmi is doing this physical work. This is the level of Yaakov. This is the level of Yaakov, Zureya Katser, that he has to work hard and pray, fight against his lack of love of God, his attachment to the world. All the six days of the week. This is avoda. This is very difficult. This is yegiat the nefesh. A person has to really force himself to work. The Tanya also talks about this. What is the parak? Mem alafe. Yegiat nefesh. Yegiat baser. You have to really force yourself to serve God. Lead bonen to think deeply about how great God is. To give birth to some sort of love and fear of God. Very difficult. Doesn't come naturally. Notzimi libo ratzona zara to take out. From your mind, strange desires. Ajielo rak ratzon echad that you should only have one desire for your God, your Father in heaven. Shekol zeoyadim milcham. It's a big war. This is the level of Yaakov in each and every Jew that he has to fight a big war. First of all, a big war just to believe there is such a thing as God, and then to believe that the Torah is true, and then to believe that I'm obligated to listen to it, and then to start to do it. Who this is a, a more even more difficult. And yet a person has to has to try to change his nature and do more good and do less bad and to just you can't flow anymore. You can't. This is a big battle, a big battle against his yetzer, against his egotism. Like it says in the Zohar, Shat Saluta, Shat Karov. It says the time of prayer is the time of war. Like it says in the books of uh, uh, the whole the the Sifri in the Midrash, which is called the Sifri. It's a Midrash on. Um, and Vayikra, and um, I mean, I'm 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 and Devorim, in Parshas Akev, it says Samach le lapaltin shala lo kavsha, says you're trying to take over the world in your own palace you haven't conquered. You you think you're going to go and you make money you're going to be famous, you're going to conquer the world you haven't even conquered yourself. Therefore, if you have not, a person has not gotten rid of his selfish, negative character traits, to draw down godliness by means of prayer, how can you possibly draw godliness into the world? Therefore, you have to have, first of all, a big war. Overcoming your body, that's the level of Yaakov. Therefore, a person should always see as though Kodesh Shora Betoch Me'av 
שנאמר בקיר בך קודש, a person should always see that inside of me is potentially a lot of holiness, and therefore I have to bring it out, therefore you have to have a lot of amal, a lot of hard work, yagia and effort. This is in Yaakov. Today, in order that there can be revealed godliness in your soul. For this reason, it's forbidden to eat before you daven. Why? Because uh, before it says before a person davens, he, he, he's, he hasn't refined himself. Now you want to eat means refining the world. You're going on into the world. Because the soul is not yet refined. All of this is the service of the six days of the week. This is like Yaakov. Yaakov of the of, but on Shabbos, Shabbos is supposed to be like the service of Yisrael. This is Bechinus, is Bechinus, Beshanato et Tamo, It says by King David that he changed his whole nature, right? He was caught by, what is it? Who was it? The, 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 a king, uh, what is it, uh, of Gath? Anyway, King David was trapped by this king and by, uh, uh, by the brother of Goliath, and David changed his whole nature. He made himself crazy. He says that's what it's on Shabbos. On Shabbos, the regular days of the week is we have to work hard. On Shabbos, we change our nature. We come crazy for God. The mm -hmm. Then you can you can drive away all of your selfishness and your egotism. You can transform darkness to light until there is menucha. Then there's no amal. And that's what Bilam said, Lora Amal be Israel. And God does not see any sin in Jacob, and he doesn't see any hard work in Israel. What does it mean, hard work in Israel? That every Jew potentially has this level of Yisrael, which is being like a tzaddik. And there it's not difficult to overcome the confusion, which is inside and outside. Because there isn't any confusion. You're just clear what God is. Like it says, Kibo Shabbat. That's like the level of Shabbat. The whole world is holy. The world doesn't interfere bother you anymore. But Zeo, that's the level of Yisrael. What is Yisrael? Sheer Kale. Yisrael is Sheer Kale, the song of God. Other places it says Yisrael is Yis, Yeshar Kale, straight to God. Sheer is Shin Yud. Other places it says Yud Shin Re, Yeshar Kale. But here it says Sheer Kale, the song of God. Yisrael is the higher level. This is the song, Shira, Shall begin a tale of the level of God's kindness, like it says, Chesed Kale Kol Olam. This is the song to God, God's love. In the weekday, weekdays, you don't feel God's love. You just have to work very hard against your own nature. Shabbat ideally is supposed to be that you feel God more. That's what's yes, that's the level of Yisrael. The whole week is the level of Yaakov. Shabbos is the level of Yisrael. That's when it's sheer kale. That's a song. To the level of God's kindness. Hainusha, to feel the Shabbos, the prayer of Shabbos is pleasure. God's love from the greatness of Hashem. Shemit Angin, that this pleasure, this name, Kale of God. That the Jewish people get pleasure in their prayers by means of thinking deeply in the greatness of Hashem. Like it says, Tamu ra'u kitov Hashem. Taste and see that God is good. This is the level of Yisrael. And the level of Yisrael, this it says, God does not see any hard work. Lora amal be Yisrael. There's no hard work. In other words, you don't have to work hard against yourself. Godliness is more available. The Hasid, that's what it says, Yismach Yisrael Bosav. The Jewish people are happy in their creator. And therefore, Lora amal Yisrael. Therefore, God does not see any of this hard work in the Jewish people. Because the service of the Jewish people on Shabbat and potentially the whole week is without any hard work. Now, you should know that this is really the essence of a Jew. This is really the way Jews are supposed to be. This is really the way it's supposed to be. The reason we're not so is because we're in exile, Gullus. But the whole Tanya starts off that you should be a tzaddik. Before the soul comes into the body, it's given an oath, be a tzaddik, take tzaddik. You should be a tzaddik. And then it's also given these additional oaths, which is don't be a Russia. And even, even if everybody tells you you are a Russia, that you should look at yourself at Tzadik and explain that that's three levels of a, of a Tzadik. And don't be a Russia. That's like a, a Russia. 
that he has all these bad thoughts, right? And then even if everybody tells you you are a tzaddik, you should look at yourself like you are Russia. That's the Benoni. <clears throat> he says, what, is it, what does this mean? It means that everybody really, every Jew is given an oath, and God doesn't give you an oath that you can't keep. He's, the, the soul is sworn in that it will come in the world and it will be a tzaddik. What does it mean to be a tzaddik? To connect to who you really are. When a person connects to who we really are, is <clears throat> that all the difficulties are not difficulties. They're not really difficulties. It's a big pleasure. It's like these people, you know, they're chess masters or something like that. So they're, they're up against a difficult opponent, right? It's a difficult opponent, but they, have, they can't forget that, they're, that they've been blessed that, that they can play chess, that they have uh, intelligence, that they have this. So it's a challenge to them. It's not like, oh, another match, this is awful. Why don't they just leave me alone? I don't want these matches. All day. He does want the matches, exactly that. So that's the idea of, of Laura Amo be Yisrael. It's not difficult. Just like a normal person, it's not difficult for him to, you know, to not cut off his finger. You know, to not go to the, to the kitchen, take a knife and cut off your finger. He has to fight a big battle. That's ridiculous. No normal person, maybe an insane person has to do not a normal person. The same thing, a normal Jew, he doesn't have to fight any battles not to cut, be separated from God. It's just a natural thing. That's what Israel really is. But because we are now in exile, so and things aren't the way they're supposed to be, so we have to fight these terrible battles. That's the level of Yaakov. That's what it says. And Bilam saw all this. Bilam said, and the aspect of the Jews which is called Yisrael, the essence of a Jew, to hate Sadiq, there's no hard work, no amal. Rak, litaneg, only to get pleasure from Hashem. The Korot of the Shabbos own it. Batam, the reason for this, she'en sharf b'Shabbos b'chines omo, why don't you have to have any hard work <coughs> or this big, uh, how do you say, difficult, uh, difficult uh, struggles on Shabbat? She'bechol, because on the weekdays, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to, like you do in the, in the weekdays, what's the difference? Shabbat is the letter, le, letters of Tashab to return. Hainu Shabbachol, then in the weekdays, the soul goes down. You read at the Chayot, things are coming down, so to speak, from God into the creation. The rest of the week is creation days, six days of creation. Hainu Shasham, Elokus, their godliness is concealed, comes into the world. Like it's known, like it's a Shemesh Umogin, the God that says he's a He's the sun in the sky, and he's also the shield over it. The six days of the week, that's God shielding himself. We don't see. Therefore, you have to have it's crying out in prayer and begging God for mercy. That's what's called an Ovid Elohim. We talked about this before. Remember in the 15th chapter of the Tanya, a, what's called a, a server of God. Server, he's serving the Taken, serving God. Ovid Elohim. A person has to fix up, the Taken fix up his bed. Emotions is bad, ideas is bad, nature is bad, his negative habits. He fixes up the name Elohim so that it shouldn't conceal. But on Shabbos, it says everything, it's the, the movement is the opposite, not coming from above to below. Shabbos goes back up. It says, Vayechal Elohim, that God, so to speak, goes away, this aspect of Elohim, this concealment. Perish, Akalta, Bechinesu, Madrigas, Midas, that this whole idea that God conceals himself. This goes away on Shabbat. That's what makes Shabbat. That's why Shabbat is the letters of Tashav, return. That's why Shabbat is the letters of returning. Aliyot Olamot. All of the worlds are like more meaningful. It's easier to feel godliness. Therefore, it's called Shir El. Yisrael is Shir El, the song to God's love. El is the aspect of God's kindness and love. Not Shir Elohim. He is still, because on Shabbat, ideally, you go out of this concealment. Therefore, it's not relevant any screaming out and begging to God. Exactly the opposite. The whole thing of the Shabbat is pleasure. The Galba Shabbos. That's the difference between Yaakov and the level of Yisrael. Like it says, that's when God changed Yaakov's name to Yisrael because he won the battle. That he fought with the name Elohim and he overcame it this, all this concealment in the, that the world conceals over the creator 
So that's what Bilam saw. Bilam saw that the Jewish people have potentially this aspect of Yisrael, which means they won't have to fight with bad anymore. But as they are, they didn't. And we'll see that, that Bilam realized that the Jews were not on this level of Yisrael. And we're going to see at the end of this week's Torah portion, we'll learn about this today, that Bilam gave a terrible advice and it worked to make all of the, 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 the daughters of uh, Moab, whatever, the, to be prostitutes. This is the Jewish people, they love God, but they love to have a good time also. And that, <clears throat> that's the level of Yaakov. They were supposed to fight and they didn't. And Shabbos is a revelation of godliness, really. That's what it means. Hashem Elokav Imo. That's what it means that God is with him. This is that level of Yisrael. The level of Yaakov, God doesn't see the sins, but there's, you have to work hard. You have to work hard. And God overlooks it when you do sins, but you have to work hard. The, that's the level of Yaakov. That's what it says. Lo he beat oven be Yaakov. But in Yisrael, there's not even any hard work. There's no struggle in the aspect of Yisrael. He automatically feels his true identity of Hashem. This is in the potential of every Jew. And evil Bilam saw it. Now let's go to the... Finish the Sikha of the Rebbe. Huh? Let's go. Beautiful picture of the Ben Yishchai. Yeah. 